In one of our previous tutorial on random numbers, we learned how to generate random numbers. Can we generate random strings or uh, kind of random names? That's something which we'll try to solve as an exercise in this tutorial. Let's get started. So the first question, write a function to calculate the number of occurrences of a particular string in a list of array or string. So this is the string that we have where we have hi uh, quite a few times, hello a few times, and then we have abc and w, x, y, z, some random strings. Now in this, if you also observe hi is uh, all small case, and here we have h in capitals, and we also have h and i both in capitals, and this hi is similar to this hi, so where h and i both are small case. So if you have to count the number of hi in this string and what we learned about strings is the best library to use for string manipulation is string r and let us call this st variable as well and let us run this particular line as well for st. Now if we have to count the number of hi we have an option using str underscore count. Using str underscore count, we have to pass a string and the pattern. So the string is nothing but variable st. Now, if we execute this, let's execute this. So it gives us one. The first word is exactly what we're looking for, high. And also the last word, high. But it does not capture this high and this high here. It shows zero everywhere else. So what do we have to do to ensure that it captures the high even if it's a capital initially we will have to convert this to small case because we have already learned that in r and python they are case sensitive so if we have a capital it will consider that as a different string altogether so just to ensure that all the other highs where we have the case sensitivity problem so to do that what we can do is we can convert all of these words into a similar case that is everything converted to small case and how can we do that str underscore two underscore lower and inside that if we just pass the string here so which is st and once i pass this and click on the run button now if you see everything is converted now if we just reassign the value of st as str to lower so now st has everything in small case. Now if we run this function again, str underscore count to find how many highs are there, it now captures not just the first and the last, but also the second and the fifth elements. So that is the beauty of the string r function, where it helps us to ensure that the case sensitivity issue is taken care of, and it then counts all the number of words with the same spelling. If you have to count now, we have to now use the sum function here. So if I use a sum function here and then execute this, it will then give me the sum of all these, which is four. So there are four occurrences of the word high in this particular variable. Now, the question here is write a function to calculate the number of occurrences of a particular string. So if we have to create a function, the way of creating a function is using the function keyword with the parenthesis in R. Now inside the parenthesis, what would we like to pass? We would like to pass the variable which has all these words. We would also want to pass a particular word like high, which is what we want to count. So let us say that high word, we are passing it as a user choice. Let the user decide what word he wants to check for the number of occurrences. And then inside the curly braces, we can use this exactly as it is. I'm taking a risk of doing a copy paste here just to save time. And instead of high here, we use user choice. And once we calculate the sum, we put that inside another variable, which is say total. And then we have to return 
the variable total here right and now we have to give a name to this function let's say total count now let me execute this function here and now let's see total count and inside I can pass the string and the user choice so let me pass this variable st and high here and now once I execute this it would give me a count of four all right perfect but there is still a problem here now supposing the user enters a capital high here and once I run this line it says zero because we have converted everything to small case here isn't it and uh, suddenly the user is entering a capital H and a small i which does not exist in the string because everything has been converted to small case so we will have to slightly modify this as well taking into consideration that user could enter it in any which ways but eventually user intends to check the number of occurrences of the word high he did not intend to check the number of occurrences of capital H of course if he did intend to have a capital H then it's a different issue altogether but if his intention is to find the number of occurrences of the word high whether H is capital or small then we'll have to make a slight modification here in the function we will have to convert user choice as well to a lower case so how do we do that just like we did in our previous line here str to lower but here it's not the variable that we are converting to lower case we are converting the user choice here so it will be user choice and once you are converted to this lower case we have to reassign it back to this variable user choice so user choice is equal to str to lower and this user choice we are going to pass inside the str count function which is in lower case so now if we execute this function if we use this function to count the number of occurrence of high even with a capital H let's see what happens once I run this line it now correctly captures even with a capital H if I execute this line it would still correctly capture hello correctly so here we have all small here we have a capitalized hello and still it captures even though the user has entered it in a weird way the first three letters capital and other two small the function correctly captures the total number of hello words all right going to the next problem generate random names of 10 people with first name and last name first name maximum five characters and last name maximum 10 characters just like we have learned in one of our random numbers tutorial how to generate random numbers we also have an option of generating random strings and to generate random strings we have to call the library random library random so just in case you do not have this library in your R Studio installed all that you need to do is just use the install.packages command and type random here that is one way of installing random library if not you can just go to tools install packages and just search for the word random here and you just have to click on the install button so now that we have installed it we have to call this library function random now what we have to do is there is something called random strings and just to understand what we have in random strings we can go to the help option here and just type random strings and here it is random strings so random strings what all do we need to pass as parameters is what we are going to enter here so if i just type random strings and inside we can pass n which is the number of random strings that we want by default it is 10 length is 5 which means the number of characters in each of these random strings would be 5 digits do we want digits as well it's set as true by default we can change that to false so that we don't have any digits we just have the characters getting displayed upper alphabets lower alphabets you would also have a randomly generating upper alphabets as well as lower alphabets because both are said to be true unique do uh, the strings need to be unique yes and other things so check 
check times for select whether quota at server should be checked first all right not sure what that is so if i just type the tab button on my keyboard and the number of random integers or bytes to be retrieved so let me just put that as 10 what else do i want the length of each now i want the first name to be maximum five characters so i would just type five here digits so i don't want digits so i enter f which means false or i can also type it completely let me leave the other things as it is all right and now let me assign this to a variable called first name let me just print what i have in first name first name we have all these random names getting displayed here so we also have capitals in between we have quite a few capitals here some capitals here and uh, you know sometimes capital at the very end so first names or names ideally would only be having the first letter as capital everything else small so let us just convert everything to small so upper alphabets will be false by default now if i click on the run button again right all the letters are small case similarly i can also create a variable last name now if i just print last name here i have 10 random strings of length 10 so this is how we can generate random names here now i have to ensure that the first character is capital and even the last name the first character has to be capital so the way i do that is i can change the first name to str2 and if i use this option title and now pass the first name variable as a parameter inside and now if i click on the run button so the first name the first letter will be capital let me just print first name all over again i just select first name here and click on the run button now here if you see the first letter is capital in all the words similarly we have to do with the last name we are reassigning it to the last name variable and now if i click on the run button last name also has the first character capital so we have a combination of the first name as well as the last name now if you want we can just map them so if I type something like this, first, first name plus last name, I'm, I'm calling the first index of first name and the first index of the last name. And if I click on the run button, I'm sorry, I need to use the paste operator. If I use the paste function here, paste and inside, if I just pass it like this, you need to use a separator so i paste these two parameters and then i pass the separator as a comma and a space now if i click on the run button this is the name the first name last name separated by a comma so this is how i can generate the first name and the last name together which would be the full name so if i have to have all these 10 names mapped together i can use the for loop here so for i in 1 to 10 full name is equal to paste first name and square bracket i'll be passing i and then i'll be passing last name and once again the square bracket will be passing i and these two will be separated by separator comma and a space so all that have done is i have taken this whole thing inside the for loop and just given it a name as full name this is the name of the variable and now let me also print the full name here all right now if i execute the for loop all these 10 names the first name and the last name get printed with a comma separation and a space so this is how we can randomly generate 10 names but of course if you see here these don't look like proper names i mean we can't even pronounce them as book 
Lloyd, God knows what, how we pronounce these names. So we also have something called random names as well. Let me look at the install packages and we have something called random names. Now, if I install this package, let me also call this random names package here. Let me execute that line. All right. Now, this is what we'll be doing as our exercise number three, generate random names of people that sound genuine. So these names that we generated here, they definitely do not exist. If they exist, it will be purely coincident. All right. To generate random names, we are going to use the library random names. And the way we use that is we use something called random names. So there's a function called random names. And here, if we see, let me just type random names here. Random names. Yeah. So here, if we see, we again have an option of passing the number of names that we want, gender, ethnicity, which names? Do you want the first name and the last name? Both. So this is one way of generating random names. Let's try to use this and see, are we really getting proper names here? Random names. And inside the parenthesis, let's pass n is equal to 10. And say gender, gender is optional. So which means by default, it would take any gender. It could be male or female. And let, let us say I ignore everything else. All right. And if I click on the run button, it is giving me Cole Charita. These names look genuine, don't they? Butler Nash Gullet, Johnston Julia, Julia Johnston. So it looks like the last name dot first name. So last dot first is by default the way in which the names will be displayed if we don't mention them. So this is how we can also generate random names of people using the random names library in R. Isn't it fantastic? And where can we use it? So if we have some data set which we want to give it to our consultant for analysis and we all also have names of our clients or customers and we don't want their names or identity to be revealed, we can just delete those personal data of our clients, replace that with these random names. And if we want 15 of them, we can generate 15 random names. So Shakespeare, Bryna Shakespeare. And you can probably try playing a little bit with these parameters say gender if i just put that as what option do i have male and female so zero and one so if i pass zero it means it will be male so if i just pass zero here click on the run button all these are male names and if i just type one here these are all marisa sydney brown courtney so these are all female names here and if i don't pass gender it would be all a mixture of male and female names and maybe you can just try the other things as well and see what all things you can generate out of this function, random names. All right, that's what I have in R. Now this has already become a little lengthy tutorial. See you in the part two of this tutorial where we'll be generating answers for all these questions in Python. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have any questions, suggestions, feedback, please do post them in the comment section. See you in the next tutorial. Thank you very much.